Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 7, uh, Uniform Circular Motion. Um, so if you recall in chapter 5, we talked about the turning effects of forces, right? This is where we're talking about moments and torques and couples. In this chapter, chapter 7, we're going to be talking about rotational motion, which is to say it is motion that is conf uh, uh, th that is in a circle. Uh, and we'll for the, for the purpose of this chapter, we'll only look to uh, talk about, we'll confine ourselves to motion in a circle. So before we go further, we have to actually talk about uh, how to measure um, motion in a circle because in a, a straight line, when you're moving from point A to point B, you express this displacement in terms of meters or centimeters or something like that, right? But if you have a circle, and apologize if I draw, my drawing uh, really sucks, uh, but if you have some, you know, an object that, let's use a different color for this. Uh, if you have an object that is here, and let's call this point A, and it ends up going to point B over here, how do you express this? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this, right? You can look, um, you can look at what this distance was, right? Like the, the arc length, um, and let's call that, let's call that S. And you can look at also kind of the um, the angle, so from the center, that has been created by this. So let's call that theta, right? Um, so you, you can look at the angle. You can also look at uh, another parameter that you have available to you is this radius r. So what happens is that like the larger the circle uh, becomes, the longer the arc, arc length becomes, and and uh, the reverse is also true. So what is a good way of measuring um, angular motion? Well, that would be basically a, a parameter called radians, and you should be able to recognize radians uh, from your mathematics uh, classes. Um, and it's a measure of the angle. So I'll call it like this, angle in radians, right? Uh, and the angle is basically, you know, whatever your arc length is, S, divided by whatever the radius is, right? Um, so what we call that is one rad occurs when you have, um, uh, as you can see, you know, S upon R equals one, right? So that means that S equals to R for one rad. So that's an easy way of remembering what radians means. You know, we usually use degrees to measure angles to come, you know, one, one whole circle is uh, 360 degrees. And there's no real reason why a circle would be split into 360 degrees, but it's much more convenient to uh, use radians. So radians is the ratio of this arc length to the, uh, the radius of that circle that uh, this object is moving in. So let's just uh, work through a few common kind of uh, ang uh, angle measures that you are going to encounter in your studies so what would be what would be the um, circumference of the circle right of any circle really the circumfer uh, circumference is going to be uh, 2 pi r right so very clearly it should be evident to you that 360 degrees is the same as two pi radians, or one radian is equal to 360 degrees divided by two pi. So, and, and when you work that out, that works out to be 57.3 degrees. So let's work through small examples here what would 180 degrees be when you express it as radians? Well, it's basically going to be 180 times two pi upon 360, right? So that gives you pi radians. That's convenient. Um, let's use this same approach really, you know, to put down what the other angles would be. And the answer there, let's work through this, 90 degrees as a result of what we're doing is uh, equal to half uh, pi upon two radians. Sorry, I shouldn't say half, it's pi upon two radians. 60 degrees would be pi upon three radians. 
and 45 degrees would be pi upon 4 radians. So, you know, maybe you can pause the video at this point and try to work this out uh, by yourself. And we can go the other direction now, right? Um, and basically, if we go in this direction, and the operator there would be the reverse, right? We're multiplying by 360 upon 2 pi. So, so the, recipro the reciprocal, you multiply by that. And uh, pi upon 4 radians, we've just seen, works out to be 45 degrees, right? And two-thirds of, uh, of pi radians would work out to be 120 degrees. So some uh, measures, easy to understand. You can work through this calculation on your uh, own. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the next piece of this video, which is uh, how do you then measure the actual motion? So now, now that we have radians available to us, right? How do you measure displacement and how do you measure velocity in an angular motion, circular motion setting? So consider that you have a particle moving around uh, at a, in a circle at a constant speed of v. And um, the angular displacement is defined as, you know, the change in the angle, which is measured in radians. Now, as the particle moves around the circle, the angular displacement increases at a steady rate. You know, it's moved from point A to point B, so its displacement has increased. The rate of change in the angular displacement is called the angular velocity. So therefore we introduce a new term called angular velocity, which is defined as the change in angular displacement over a change in time. Or you can say that it's the angle that's swept out by the radius per unit time. So this is denoted by the Greek letter omega, which looks like a W, but it's actually a Greek letter, letter omega. Uh, and it's basically, you know, it's delta theta over delta T, change in the angle theta over some change in time. So what I want you to kind of think about it is this way. Um, how, how does circular motion, how does it translate to um, uh, motion in a straight line? So both of these, circular and linear motion, have displacement of some kind. In the case of linear motion, you use the symbol S and the unit is meters. And in the case of circular motion, you use the symbol omega and your unit is radians. Similarly, velocity uh, here is gonna be denoted by uh, small case v and your units are meters per second. And the relationship that you have for velocity is basically uh, v equals delta s upon delta t. And in the case of angular velocity, um, you're gonna have, and I apologize, I'm sorry, I should have uh, rewritten this. Uh, I meant to say that this was not omega, but rather your angle theta. Sorry, that was just me checking that you were awake. <laughs> uh, and velocity is denoted by omega. And this becomes radians per second. And you can see the formula up there, omega is uh, the change in the angle theta divided by how much time has elapsed. So if we look at this um, this um, diagram right here, this diagram right here, um, what I want you to no notice is the change in the angle theta is delta theta is equal to the arc length AB divided by R, isn't it? So the omega then becomes the length of this arc AB divided by R times delta T. Or think about it for a second. What is a upon B, A, A, the length of AB divided, uh, divided by delta T, that's just the angular velocity, V, divided by R. So we arrive at our most important relationship, which is V equals R times omega. So let's work through an example on this. So let's say you're traveling in a car and it's approaching a bend which is circular. 
and the sur uh, and the and the radius of this bend is 24 meters and you're traveling at a constant speed of uh, 15 meters per second so let's make sure that we can calculate the angular velocity omega so that we just figured out was based on the relationship we saw in the in just a few minutes ago here is v upon r so it's basically 15 divided by 24 which is equal to 0 0.625 what are the units guys just make sure you understand this is angular velocity so we have just made this into radians per second mathematically if you look at the units here right what is the unit here it's meters per second up here and down here it's simply meters so the meters are going to cancel each other out and the seconds are um, going to come into play and radians, remember, is a is is a dimensionless. Um, it's simply the degrees there, right? So that's why we we don't need to explicitly bring in radians into this uh, into this formula um, when you're when you're trying to balance the equation out as we've been trying to do here. So that brings us to the end of uh, this video. In our in our next video, we're going to talk about centripetal acceleration and force. So I'll see you in the next video.